Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, so far we have seen that B cell receptor, also we have seen T cell receptor, but I told a uh, couple of times at least that B cell receptor can recognize antigen directly. Okay, so, B cell receptor can recognize antigen directly. So, if there is an antigen, B cell receptor can, uh, B cell receptor can directly attack T cell. But I already told that T cell receptor cannot recognize the antigen directly. For that, what we need? For that, we need it should be presented by presented by MHT, major histocompatibility complex. So, this lecture now I'm going to discuss about antigen recognition by T cell. Actually, we are going to talk about mostly in the initial part. The main theme is antigen recognition by T cell, but initially we are going to discuss about major histocompatibility complexes M A T. Okay. So, you already know that T cell receptor recognize antigen in the form of a complex of foreign peptide which is bound to M H T. So, if it bounds to M H T only then it is going to be recognized by T cell. Okay. And if I will show you now one picture which is already um, which is already I have shown you that there are two classes of MHT molecule, right. They are very distinct subunit composition, but their three dimensional structure or they are just if you look suddenly they are very similar looking. Okay. This was the simplest cartoon that already we have discussed this is MHT 1 this is M H T 1 and the other one is M H T 2, this is M H T 2. I mean if you see the yellow box or solid part of yellow is very very same, right. And only difference what you can see here there is one transmembrane domain and here there are two transmembrane domains, transmembrane domain. These thing already we have discussed in the basic uh, part of the initial part of our lecture. But if you see detail, how this structure or this kind of um, cartoon came up, it is most of the protein structure, you know, it is came from crystallographic structure. Do not be scared by all this figure, I will explain very slowly. This is one way presentation of the um, uh, crystal structure of a protein, ok. There are different domain of different color. This is alpha helix and beta 6 is another simple way that we can understand and this is just the cleft this region ok this region cleft means where it where the antigen binds if you see this region let me take a pen that will be easier for me. So, this region is if you see like if, if you see something if I show you something like this ok this way you can see the outline here, and if you see this, you can see the outline here, only the outline. But how this look inside, you can see only if it is do like this. So, how the inside is, you have to see how flat it is, how what is the space, you can see if I show you this, this, uh, this view, right, top view, ok. This is the side view, this figure is the, this is the side view, how it looks sideways, and this is the top view. So, this is actually the slate this region is a cleft. So, it is like a plate or a dish where there is a where there are some ridges there ok. So, something should not fall apart and there is a space between. So, antigen can fit here I mean in this region in this pump top it can fit the antigen and this is the boundary. So, this region the peptide binding cleft is basically the pump. And if you make it simpler version, this is the peptide cleft, ok. This is the peptide cleft, 
and this is overall structure. You see again here also the binding site of the peptide layer is mostly the um, beta sheet and alpha helix and the major structure or the framework region overall structure maintained by mostly the beta sheet. Okay, it is very similar structure of globulin molecule. Okay, so, now if I see one by one, so this is the uh, stressful model and you see the different domain has different color, I will see this is again this is in better, this is the peptide plate. Okay, this is alpha helix, this two are alpha helix and rest part and the plate portion where the flat portion of the plate are beta sheet. Okay. This is the same picture what I showed before. So, this is the alpha helix and this is the flat portion is the beta sheet and this is again another alpha helix. Okay, two alpha helix and beta sheet is making the sign. And now if I see how this structure is, you see there are two peptide actually. One peptide has three domain alpha 1, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3, 1, 2 and 3. Okay. Alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 2, this is one polypeptide chain which has 1, 2 and 3 domain. And that domain that 1, 2 and 3 along with that, this is the transcendent domain which is integrated here along with the main domain. Okay. The transcendent domain was just fixed in the main domain. So, alpha 1, alpha 2, this is the outer. So, this is this is cytosol and it is inside the cell and that is outside the cell. So, this is outside the cell. Okay. So, it is exposed to the outside of the cell. This is cell membrane. Okay, this is this is the membrane. So, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 is one polypeptide chain and another protein it is just like if this something is like there and if you need a support okay, so that it should not fall apart you need a support kind of thing. So, this support is the another peptide named beta microglobulin. Okay. So, these three domain is there and beta microglobulin is there it is not covalently linked. Okay. It is just a protein protein interaction. So, something is like that and it is giving a support. Clear? Now, I am going to go to MHC. This is MHC 1. So, MHC 1 consisted of two peptides alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, one peptide and beta microglobulin gene or beta microglobulin which is giving a support or making the MHC complex, MHC 1 a complete structure. Same way, if you see the MHC 2, you see suddenly if you if I do not show you the previous picture and we just uh, drop this part, okay, this region if we do not consider for the time being, then what will happen? You see it is very similar, you, you can remember what you have seen before, right, this same four domain, same four color code, their peptide binding plate is exactly similar looking, they have a beta sheet in the flat portion and this peptide binding plate again looks like same. Okay, this beta sheet is here, alpha helix are here. Only thing if I see this cartoon, then I can see that oh no, this is not really exactly same as MSC1. Okay, crystal structure is very, very important to know all these details. But crystal structure determination is one of the toughest things. Even today, there are so much advance in uh, crystallography and uh, data structure analysis, but even today it is very, very tough. Okay. First uh, uh, hurdle is protein purification, you need a very pure protein, okay. then you need to uh, find a condition where it will be crystallized, then you have to if that, that crystal should diffract properly. Okay. Many times the crystallographer got nice looking crystals, but the diffraction is not the resolution of diffraction is very, very bad. So, you cannot get the proper structure. Now, a different technology cryo EM um, uh, technique for protein structure is here. So, now life is much more easier than crystallography. 
and data sets, I mean, uh, uh, x-ray diffraction. But even today, the problem of this kind of structure, like MHC, structure of MHC, is very, very tough. Why? I am telling all these things just to give you an idea like this thing is okay, there is no point. I mean, why people are doing this? I mean, this is very simple. No, it is not that simple. Because first point you have to remember it is there in uh, my uh, next or next or some slide later. The MHC molecule are very unstable until unless they are bound to peptide. This structure is not very stable if there is no peptide attached to it. Second problem that MHC molecule is a membrane bound protein. All membrane bound protein has a strong hydrophobic region and to make protein or you need to dissolve the protein to get crystal and hydrophobic proteins are not dissolved easily in water. So, you have to have a find a uh, solution and third more Im, I mean, uh, third point and which is very important and isolation of membrane protein is really, really tough. Okay. There is no one buffer or one system that all membrane protein will come and um, it will be in the solution. And because you know the our cell membrane is not very straightforward, right? There are a lot of lipids are there, fatty acids are there, and there are a lot of proteins are there, some are embedded. So, that lipid bilayer you have to dissolve first. And to do that, and there are some certain region I am not going that much detail, but to dissolve this lipid and to get that protein out from that lipid, you need a very harsh solution. Okay, it is not that very uh, a quick, I mean, mild detergent can be anything. Many times, to dissolve the protein, to rupture the membrane, to dissolve the protein, your uh, buffer should be very, very tough. And in that tough condition, I, I should say more uh, scientifically, it is denatured the protein. And if the protein denatured, then it will lose its structure, you cannot determine it. So, any membrane protein structure determination is very tough. In this case, it is even more tough because MHC molecules are very unstable without peptide. Okay? And as soon as you give a, uh, uh, a strong denaturing solution or detergent or something, that peptide will fall apart because this is not a covalent bond. As soon as it falls apart, MHC molecule will be unstable. So, these structures, what you will see in this figure, okay, very simple and easy, it is not that easy. Okay. So, uh, this is just to give an idea, and after doing all these things, even today, not many MHC molecule structure has been determined. But so far, some scientists spend uh, too much effort and sincerity, that is how we can tell or we know something about MHC. So, from that crystal structure, whatever we are going to tell, that is not going to take long time. I can tell you it is very simple because I already told you that alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 is a major part of the MHC 1 and support or the other component is the beta microglobulin which constitute the MHC 1. If you see MHC 2, if you see MHC 2, then it is two chain, two polypeptide chain, one is alpha, this this one, well, this one is alpha and another one is beta. Okay, so, both of them, alpha also has two domain and beta chain also has two domain. Both of them independently, they have a transmembrane domain. So, alpha 1 is impregnated in uh, cytoplasm, alpha and uh, sorry, sorry, alpha chain also they are uh, in uh, uh, have a transmembrane domain which is fixed in uh, plasma membrane and beta chain also has a transmembrane domain which is fixed in plasma membrane. So, they come together and form this plaque. Okay. So, this plaque is contributed by two different chains alpha and beta. So, now, I will tell some difference slowly, so that you can uh, remember what is what and how, how their function is different. This is again the same thing what we discussed in bigger format. So, I will just, so if you go 
there this is the same thing, same crystal uh, structure, alpha helix and beta sheet. This is again peptide binding clef, this is for MHC2, and this is that alpha 1, alpha 2 which is contributed, and this is the peptide binding clef of MHC2. It has two transfer endomers. So, now I will see this. See, this one is MHC1 and this one is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Just a quick look, you will find very similar, not much difference at all, right? But they are, they have a number of difference which makes their function different and also their uh, location is, uh, they are located inside the cell in different places, their function is different. I uh, do not remember, even if I tell I am repeating again, MHC1 is activating cytotoxic T cell. MHC1 is activating cytotoxic T cell. Yes, I told you because if you remember the virus protein, how it is going outside because virus protein is presented by MHC1. So, any internal protein or endogenous protein is presented by MHC1. Any external protein or protein coming from outside by phagocytosis or pinocytosis that is presented by MHC2. So, two complete different pathways. So, their role is different, even they look similar. Okay. So, what is the difference? Definitely, there is a difference in 1 and 2. I am not going. So, first difference MHC1 has one transmembrane domain. So, transmembrane domain with respect to transmembrane domain, MHC1 has one. MHC2 has two transmembrane domains. Clear? Second difference in MHC1, peptide binding cleft is constituted by one protein only. It is a continuation of one protein, even they are very similar looking. Okay. Even they are very similar looking, this one and this one very similar, but here alpha 1 and alpha 2, this is MHC1 and this is MHC2. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 are contributing this MHC1 peptide binding plate. And in case of MHC2, peptide, bin, peptide binding cleft is contributed one by alpha 1, another by beta 1. So, wha, how it is different and why it is they are exactly same looking, same space? No, there is a difference. How? Because even if you have a very big hand, there is a limit in one hand. Okay? There is a limit in one hand. So, in one hand, if this one hand, why I am telling one hand? Because this is contributed, suppose the finger part is alpha 1 and the palm part is alpha 2. Even the fingers are very big and palm is also very big, you have a limit how big thing you can hold. I am talking about the peptide here. So, in one continuous thing, if this is the alpha 1 chain, if you consider this hand is my alpha segment, so alpha this finger is alpha 1, palm is alpha 2 and this arm is alpha 3, if you like that, then you have a limit. You cannot hold a, any substance, at, I mean or rather you can hold a substance up to certain level. If it is too big, you can hold, right. If your hand is big, you can hold a basketball or a football very easily. But if I double the size of basketball, one hand may not be enough, right? But if this thing is contributed by two hands, even the size is same. Assume that my two hands are half size, so that it covers this size only. Or you think a kid with hand size, total hand size is half of my hand. Even after that, two hand is good enough to hold bigger because we have a flexibility. I can hold thing like this. One hand I, ca I have a limit, but two hand I, ha I can hold much bigger thing than a uh, single hand. So, here is the difference of MHC1 and MHC2 also. It is in one peptide cannot hold bigger peptide. One alpha chain cannot hold a bigger piece of peptide. But MHC2 can hold bigger peptide, it, it can accommodate much bigger peptide in this peptide binding cleft. So, this one chain is not 
a true chain is not just simple, so it has a variation to because whatever the peptide they are going to bind or bind in the clef, it is going to be displaced which will be recognized by T cell, which will be recognized by T cell that we have discussed before. And in the peptide binding cleft also there is slight difference. Let us go for um, for the sake and next slide. So, let us see what is there. You see here in this this is MSC 1 and this is MSC 2. How you will uh, figure it out? Because you see same color code. So, alpha 1, alpha both are alpha. So, all are yellow here and here two different chain two different color. One is yellow another is green. Right. So, this is alpha 2, but if you see this peptide side, if you see the peptide side, the red one is the peptide, this peptide side, this, this is real, I mean it is not just a uh, drawn picture, it is a real crystal, uh, I mean uh, this structure is determined from a real crystal where pep, uh, uh, MHC along with the peptide was crystallized and structure was determined. You see the length of the peptide here is much less than MHC 2. So, MHC 2 can hold bigger peptide. I will come what is the number and how big it is. So, peptides are stably bound to MHC molecule and also serve to stabilize the MHC molecule on the cell surface that I just mentioned few minutes back. MHC molecule are only stable on the cell surface if peptide is attached to it. So, only free MHC will never you will never see any free MIC on the cell surface, it is always peptide bound form. Okay. Now, the number. So, MHC class 1 molecule uh, binds hotter peptide in comparison to MHC 2 molecule. So, MHC class 1 molecule how short it is? It can bind 8 to 10 amino acids, it can bind 8 to 10 amino acids. In few books, even in uh, same JNOA book that I am uh, following, if you go to older version, you may find in 9 to 11, okay. 9 to 11 amino acids. So, it is not exactly because there is no fixed rule, it is average 8 to 10, maybe plus minus 1 or 2. Okay. So, 8 to 10 amino acid length peptide MHC 1 can bind. In case of MHC 2, it can bind approximately 13 to 20. So, the peptide length is 13 to 20. If you remember our, our discussion in the early lecture, what we have seen? The big protein chopped into pieces, a small piece go to peptide. So, that small piece size for MHC 2 is 13 to 20 amino acid length and in case of MHC 1, it is 8 to 10 this is another difference. So, one can hold bigger peptide, how big you know now and some one another MHC 1 is smaller, how small you know now. So, if you see this, this is MHC 1, this is MHC 1 with the peptide. Okay. If you see this, this is 8 to 10 amino acid peptide and this peptide, this is a peptide binding cleft. Okay, this is the alpha helix, this is the beta sheet in between and if you see carefully, what you can see is, you can see the attachment because it is again a protein protein interaction, right? because MHC is a protein and peptide is also a part of the protein. So, it is non covalent interaction. So, it is again a protein protein interaction which will follow same like hydrophobic, electrostatic, manner wall forces, uh, uh, kind of non covalent hydrogen bonding, non covalent bonding, I mean interaction. So, this interaction either one or all uh, mix, uh, possible uh, combination of this non covalent interaction, it is happening in the end part mostly. Okay. So, middle part of the peptide is not interacting, this is in case of MHC 1 and this is the analyzed peptide. So, what happened? Different peptide were tried. Is this binding specificity is 
as specific as antibody antigen interaction or T cell receptor peptide interaction? No. They may be they can accommodate smaller size of peptide, but their specificity is not that strong or that specific like antibody antigen interaction. Here suppose this is 7, 8 nucleotide peptide and what scientists did? They tried to feed variety of peptide to see which is for a particular MHC definitely, which is binding better than rest or which is the best binding. What they found that in this case for example, in this case the C terminal should be always lucid okay? and this one is you see the organic tyrosine or phenylalanine, rest may be anything. So, two position of this particular peptide is very important to interact. Similarly, this is another uh, this is the example of another set of peptide which is again this N I mean the C terminal peptide and this here it is though conserved all should be tyrosine, but rest is not that important and this is not true for antibody, antibody cannot be that generous. Okay. Why? Because we have so many antibody in our system, variety of antibody which can accommodate any kind of antigen almost, but we do not have that many MHC molecules. We have a limited number of MHC, okay. say for example, 200 per individual. Okay. So, these 200 average can not uh, present only 200 type. So, what is happening? One MHC can display variety of peptide. They are only specific only two or three regions. In this case, MHC one only two specific sites or location. If it is okay, rest the MHC does not care. So, one MHC can display variety of peptide where sequences are different only if this thing is maintained. Now, what is this thing? This say in the C terminal case in this case of all leucine, in the N terminal all should be tyrosine and here uh, valine, isoleucine, leucine. Okay. But if you see this is all organic, this is all hydrophobic, right. So, this all are hydrophobic. So, there is a pattern, it is not like any amino acid. So, why this is? Similarly, if we go for MHC 2, MHC 2 binding not only it is bigger, you see it binds almost throughout the cleft. End is definitely it is interacting in the end, but it is interacting throughout the cleft. Again a difference, MHC 1 binds mostly at the end, but MHC 2 binds I mean not this, I mean with the peptide throughout its cleft. All this non covalent interaction happening throughout its cleft. And this is another example the same way. This is a variety of peptide generated and tested with a particular MHC. What is their flexibility? All the green one, they are rigid, okay, not exactly 100 percent um, conserved, but you can say there is a pattern definitely. But if you see like this, all this most of except one peptide, this one, except this one, all have aspartic acid here except one is glutamic acid, right. Same way you will see the fertile. So, they can accommodate not I mean the variety their length is also varied. Okay, they accommodate bigger and more flexible, their interaction pattern is different. So, these are the different I mean if there is a question come in exam like what is the difference between M H C one or compare M H C one and M H C two okay structure and function wise structure definitely you can tell and this is the function. Function is one is ex presenting to uh, cytotoxic T cell, another is presenting to the helper cells, their peptide length is different, their interaction pattern is different, their uh, peptide step is made by one peptide and two peptide, two transfemin all are coming to the comparison between MHC 1 and MHC 2. Their locations are different that we will see later, maybe in the next lecture or next to next lecture.